Thank you. Welcome to our live for this Thursday at the Lovely Dinosaur Omelette. Welcome. I'm Christopher. I'm Angela. And yes, again, with Dinosaur Omelette. So tonight, folks, thanks for stopping in. We're, um, I'm going to go over uh, what we're going to do tonight is our, uh, what did I say here, Homestead Resolutions 2024. And we're going to be talking about goal setting, what we're looking forward to doing this year. By the way, guys, if you're watching this live especially, or even afterwards, what are your goals this year? Type them down in the bottom, and we'll be happy to talk about that with you guys and discuss what we may have in plan. Let me set that camera up. Working off a phone. And uh, just in case you were wondering, uh, we rescheduled from last week because we were recovering from illness, and Christopher's voice is a little scratchy from that. Of course. But other than that, we're feeling very well, right? It's feeling much better, yeah. So, uh, Happy New Year. Yes, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. year. Uh, looking forward to 2024. It's going to be a fun one, I hope, or I suspect. Everything's going as usual. Um, again, guys, uh, we're a small hatchery in southern Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, and we're getting ready for, I guess, the springtime, mm -hmm. right? People yeah. are going to start ordering quails. Yeah. They start, people start ordering or preparing for their homesteads, farms, farmettes, whatever you want to call it, in uh, January, late December, January, you really start planning. If you guys have any questions about raising quail, because they are gaining popularity, uh, usually at the bottom of these videos, I add a link to our little PDF, which I highly suggest you look through if you're curious about quail, raising these things. These these answers, this is a Q and A. There's like 25 questions in there, and it will pretty much give you a primer on what to do with uh, getting started with quail, especially as a food creature. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. All right. Cool. So boom, boom, boom. Moving on. I'm a little horse still from last week's illness. Homestead resolution, I write these little notes, 2024, how they fail and why they're not going to. So why are, like we use the word resolution for New Year's specifically, it's a cultural thing. I'll have a New Year's resolution. I'm gonna be resolute in completing this goal. Okay, but it's really the same species of organism. It is uh, creating a goal mm -hmm. or an objective and pursuing it to completion. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what's the big one in the United States for resolution? Obviously, weight, right? Everybody's, I'm going to go on a diet. Yeah. Like, it's a huge diet thing at this time Especially of year. Especially after the holidays, people, you know, will eat like more. Eat. <laughs> it's, yeah, well... I don't want to get too much into that, but yeah, absolutely. Your health is impacted this time of year. Less uh, sunlight, more sedentary, obviously. So traditionally, people are always talking about that as a primary resolution. But of course, it's not the only thing or even the most important thing. There are a lot of things in our lives that we want to address. And uh, the end of year is a hallmark time. It's a, uh, it's a benchmark that is very easily delineated from everything else. Mm-hmm. Right? right, yeah. So it's easy to make. That's our concrete time. And uh, also, we, we don't just wake up one day and change. Although we can. You know, it doesn't need to be the uh, new year to start a new goal. It could be Tuesday or tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Your goal... The, these are uh, psychological um, uh, markers that we use to make them special events. You know, this date is a special event. But in actuality... Your new behavior can start at any time, and your goal, uh, goal, goal setting can start at any time. But it's New Year, so I thought it was kind of gimmicky. So we're going to do New Year's. Mm -hmm. All right. So I wrote down some strategies for attaining your goals. I'm going to be brief with this because it's Thursday. People are kind of pooped out from the holidays. But number one, I have a list of six or seven of these things that I wrote down that are pretty important. Um, overall, I think the idea is we're trying to achieve something. Mm -hmm. Yes? Mm -hmm. yeah. And we don't achieve things by doing it willy-nilly. There should be some structure. Right. You know? And for each of us, the formal structure is going to be different. But there needs to be some kind of a structure to attain a goal. Anywho, boom, boom. Strategies for attaining your, your goal, whatever it may be. Well, first of all, before I even get into these, what is your goal? 
right? Yeah, you want to identify what your goal is. Yeah. Be clear about that. Write it down, you know. Um, have uh, markers of which can be measured, like mm -hmm. I'm going to achieve X by this amount of time. And, you know, that's what you're striving to. And the goal is kind of like an outline. You're going to have an overarching um, objective in between the start time and end time, whatever that might be. You have uh, your A, B, C breakdown, like I'm going to get to this point first, I'm going to measure my progress, and so on and so forth. And you know, you're going to have your apparatus in place that's going to keep you, uh, what do you call it, in line. Who's the person you go to who keeps you in check? I have a... What do you mean? You know, have an outside party to keep you... Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I had that written in here, but anyway. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I'm, I'm recovering from my illness. But if yeah, you, you want to be specific because you want to know if you're getting to your goal or if you're not getting to your goal, um, it's, it, it makes it measurable, like Christopher was saying. If it's that's, too vague, then... And that's like, why they fail. Yeah. If yeah. your goal's not specific, it's going to fail because you didn't really have anything in mind in the first place. I'm not trying to be hard on anybody, but you have to make realization, like, if you walk into something, well, I hope maybe this is going to happen and I really want to sell some extra blank this year. Well, that's not going to do anything. Because you're not being truthful and concrete with yourself to actually pursue something, even if you want to pursue something. I mean, you're getting on the right track. You know, you're setting goals. But unless you're going to be specific with yourself, you're not going to have any way to build a structure to actually get to your goal post. You know, I want to sell X amount of product from my business this year, which is, you know, 50% more than last year. So now we have at least a concrete number, 50% higher than previous year. All right, well, then you actually have good stuff. Now you can go back, look at data. Okay, I don't want to get too involved in that, but being specific about your goal is going to be important. It is a primary uh, Yeah, and that drives you forward when you, when you know, when it's specific, it, that really does help give you the momentum to keep going forward. If it's vague, then... You just, yeah, it's easy to kind of putter out. Yeah. Anyway, this is new for a lot of people. We're creatures of habit. We're habitual animals. So we wake up, we kind of do the same thing. And we're uh, autonomic, autonomic almost. We kind of just go on autopilot mm -hmm. and we repeat ourselves day to day. That's why, you know, you look at somebody five, ten years, sometimes there's very, very little growth because they get into the autopilot program. They're doing the same thing day in and day again mm -hmm. because it's routine and it's easy mm -hmm. and they don't have any, any outside um, influence suggesting change of behavior, modification, or how to do that. And so it's just difficult. And it's not saying people are stupid. It's a very difficult thing to change behavior mm -hmm. and to progress. And, you know, uh, looking for an outside help doesn't volunteer and come in. That's why I'm doing this because I like to be outside help. To volunteer and come in. And maybe influence or, uh, you know, encourage slightly if you're stagnating to mm -hmm. adopt some new behaviors or protocols that may assist you in progressing. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to be word salady. I talk a lot because I like to be clear so you can understand and I don't want to be too vague. So people talk a lot. The child sounds smart. I'm dumb as a brick, but I'm just trying to get through what it is we're trying to do here. All right, strategies that I would suggest, especially for you new, starting out new this year, and this is kind of new for you, goal setting, and it is new for people. Number one, and these aren't really in a specific order of importance. Do you want to do this or should I? You're going to do the next one then. Because oh, yeah. number two is good for you because you love doing it. But number one, again, not an important specific order, but um, prioritizing your tasks. Prioritizing your daily tasks. What's important? What's not important? Checking Facebook. Probably not important. I mean, we do it, but is it really that important? And, and even if you have a lot of tasks um, that do need to be accomplished, let's say it's maybe it's business tasks, um, and they're all, they all have, all the different types of tasks have importance, um, but you only have so much time and energy in a day, so... And we'll kind of cover a couple of those that'll spill over into these other points. But so you want to make sure you're starting with the most important things when you have the higher energy, the beginning of the day, the beginning of the start of the day. So um, and then usually if it's more if it's more of a challenging thing, if you knock it out earlier, 
then the, the things that aren't so hard are a little easier to take care of. That goes in the old file of procrastination. The things you don't like to do, you kind of put off and then they don't get done. So mm -hmm. I like the old phrase, embrace the suck. Do the things you don't like doing the most first because you're going to accomplish them and you're going to grow from it. Um, that's a hard one to do. Embracing mm -hmm. the suck, doing the, doing the hard things, doing the difficult things, but prioritizing them accordingly too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then, according to what, whatever with your, whatever you're doing, your goal. Yeah, and in the house, in the, in the setting of a homestead or a little farm or whatever you're doing, that's important because yeah. it sucks to go clean out animals, but that needs to be done or they get sick. And then mm -hmm. you don't have animals. All right, so prioritizing your daily tasks. Um, this will keep your mind, and a lot of this is to designed to keep you at peace, okay, to make you productive and getting rid of the anxiety. The anxiety is going to turn you, you know, cripple you. So you want to keep away the anxiety. Prioritization of daily tasks is going to do that because now you have um, some uh, structure and expectation and regularity. Mm -hmm. Make sense? All right, please do number two because you like doing that stuff. Embrace time blocking. Now, time blocking, it's, a, it's very simple. Um, look at your, your day, the, uh, the amount of hours you plan on being productive at whatever it is you're doing, if it's work or achieving your goal or, or whatever it is. Uh, figure out how many hours you're working in, and then you want to, you know, like I already mentioned, you want to account for your energy, when do you have the most energy, um, you want to look at the weather, if that matters, uh, time of day, or other people's schedules. And then um, schedule in, uh, on, in your mind or on a piece of paper, a, a block of time to accomplish each task. Now, what's the difference between this and just scheduling? Hmm? The time blocking is very specific and it's mm -hmm. dedicated. You're sticking yeah. to that time. And that's tough because you want to get up and do whatever and meander. It helps you be disciplined also during that block. And you're wanting to also account for if you're having to get ready to do something, cleaning up after doing something, uh, preparation, you know, that kind of thing. And you include that in your time block so that you're being efficient with your time for the day. Now these are all suggestions. If you guys have not done any of these things before, like time blocking, it may seem a little weird. Like, what the hell? why am I listening to you people? What are you talking about? This is like, of course, that seems obvious. Things that seem obvious in um, theory, when they're translated into practice, there's a huge difference, okay? Because there's going to be a behavior modification. All this stuff is behavior, okay? It's not saying you have a problem. It's just that we're creatures of routine. And changing the behavior is what is going to propagate the successful completion of a goal. Right, and it's going to show uh, data. It's going to show measurable points. So if you're time blocking or prioritizing, you're doing all these different things consistently uh, throughout um, you know, a span of time, then yeah. you're going to see the growth in that what you're pursuing. We're going to go through a few, uh, you know, several things. And if you're, if, if you've done none of these and just start to incorporate one, they're tools. Yeah. And this tool is going to allow you to all of a sudden gain a little momentum and start, you know, producing where otherwise you may not have produced as much and mm -hmm. start accomplishing things. Some things work better for others. And, you know, you're going to uh, test things out and see how they work for you. But when you're, even when you're testing these different um, time management or whatever productivity exercises, you don't, you don't want to do them just once. I mean, like, oh, it didn't really help me today. Do it for a while. Right, yeah. Six, you know. And tweak it as needed. Slow and steady wins the race. You know, growth is incremental. It's almost imperceptible. You will not even notice it most of the time because quality growth is slow but permanent. Cheap growth is quick and you see it, but then it goes away. Like we were talking at the beginning here, crash diet. You go on a quick diet, lose a lot of weight, gain it back a month later because it wasn't a behavioral change. It was just a very quick um, attempt at change and then it went right back to the old behavior. So I don't want to get too much into it. I got a psych background, so. <laughs> just um, part, uh, something to think about for what, whatever you're you know, wanting to accomplish. Um, generally, people, uh, our energy, and um, schedule like life kind of we're able to 
you generally accomplish more from 1 p.m. And, and earlier, so morning to 1 p.m. And then once early afternoon hits, then it's like a shift in the day. Some people can continue being productive and other people like life is changing. Maybe kids are coming home from, home from school or you're having to prepare, I don't know, some sort of food or you're now waning on energy or the time is changing outside. Um, there's just a shift. So think of um, blocking in, you know, to do more difficult or challenging tasks before one o'clock. And it keeps you disciplined, man. You're going to be disciplined when you're time blocking. I, look, to be honest with you, I had no desire to do this video today because I'm exhausted, right? I'm still sick. But I'm like, you know what? I, I obligated myself. I could not do this last week. I obligated and I'm going to carry through even though I'd rather go watch Netflix, right? But, you know, you, and if you are, you, it keeps you disciplined. If you have a schedule where you do have to, your only, you know, window of workability is a later hour like this or a, a time where you're likely tired or, you know, you'd rather watch Netflix or read a book or something, um, then, but you want to use the time that you have and you realize perhaps you have an, an hour of two, one or two hours in the evening to do something. Um, then try to start working with that window of time, but don't overwhelm yourself. You know, if you're starting a routine, you're starting a habit, then start with a, maybe not like a huge two hour window. If that's going to be too much for you, if you're already tired, start with maybe like 45 minutes or 30 minutes, 45 minutes or an hour, and then continue to do that. Feet first. Time. Don't jump in all at once. Yeah. And and you can go feet first. Um, mm -hmm. again, in this stuff, we haven't really been talking about it specifically as it applies to the homestead or the animal um, uh, husbandry, which is the angle we're coming from because we want you guys to be productive with your creatures. Like our little channel is dedicated toward the, uh, you know, small homestead community, the self-sufficiency people, the people who want to grow and raise food. I mean, mm -hmm. what we're talking about generalizes to everybody. And then people who want to enjoy their animals as they have them. Yeah, but all of this stuff is going to make you, you know, um, more efficient and more productive with your creatures, and you're going to have less, you know, hectic anxiety going crazy all the time. And some of it's going to be uncomfortable, mm -hmm. okay? Any changes, it's uncomfortable. Anybody who's going to tell you things are easy and it's, don't worry about it, they're lying to you. They like to lie to you yeah. because they want you to be friends. And the way we make friends is telling them what they want to hear, not what they need to hear. But what people need to hear sometimes is, Yes, change is uncomfortable. You're going to have to endure a period of discomfort, but you're going to be better off afterwards because you've grown mm -hmm. or you've learned. Okay, not mm -hmm. it's easy. That's not the answer. It never has been. If you're full-grown adults, you probably figured that out by now. Mm -hmm. Nothing's easy, but it's worth it in the end. All right, number three, again, not in any particular order of importance, establishing routine or uh, regularity, doing something that is... Um, Again, scheduled, but regular. Mm -hmm. This isn't just for efficiency, but this is for mental health. Mm -hmm. Okay, If you're not doing something regularly, you get anxiety-ridden. Any other fellow ADHD ears out there, people with the focusing issues like myself, you go nuts. Mm -hmm. Okay, It becomes very hectic if you wake up, you're like, oh my God, what am I doing? Yeah. What needs to get done? And animals are the same way. Like Animals like routine. Like your dogs, your cats, your cows, your chickens, your whatever. They want, if they know you're coming, to tend to them, feed them at a certain time, give them attention at a certain time, do something at a certain time. They're anticipating it, they're excited about it, and if suddenly the routine changes, they also get anxious and stressed. So yeah. that's how we Like before are. feeding time, they know feeding time's coming up, they maybe start mm -hmm. acting a little, hey, we're getting ready, they know. Mm -hmm. So the routine is, um, yeah, absolutely beneficial yeah that's not a huge issue for a lot of people because again we like predictability and routine and we get into a habit yeah but the routines we get into usually follow the path of least resistance mm -hmm. they're the easy habits they're the easy things to do so we we modify or at least we settle into a pattern of regularity or routine that is the path of least resistance which isn't always of course the most beneficial for us mm -hmm. in the promotion of our well-being, our growth, or and, our, even, and our goals. Even um, the tasks that you're doing, perhaps, just because you're doing, you're doing, you're taking care of your animals or you're, you're 
you know, um, using certain tools or doing certain things in your property a, a certain way because that's the routine you formed and you're used to doing it. But maybe there's a very a much more efficient way to do it, um, you know. But it, the change of adjusting to something new, changing your routine, changing your habit is it's a mental challenge. And this and it could save you time and energy. And this needs to be observed on an individual person-to-person -person basis. You know, there's some people who are very, very high-functioning. Mm -hmm. They can get a lot of stuff done. And their routine will give a regular dude a heart attack. Okay, mm -hmm. it's a lot. Yeah. But they're, they're functioning at this level. Other people, you know, everybody has things going on. And there's people who it's hard for them to get out of bed. Mm -hmm. Okay? So just incorporating one or two simple things, which may seem, well, that's no big deal to somebody else. It is a big deal to them. So if you're somebody who is having difficulty with things, don't beat yourself up. Do what you can and set your goals accordingly. It's, it's per the individual. We don't compare ourselves to others. We're comparing ourselves to ourselves and just trying to grow from who we are. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. I think that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, you know, understand who you are too when setting goals, to, doing any of this stuff, setting your objectives. But also, you know, speaking with outside persons, if it's beneficial, so you don't limit yourself. Because mm -hmm. it's easy to tell ourselves, once we get into routine, the, the, the two words, I can't, I can't, mm -hmm. or can't be. Or it's easy for us to get this, like, closed-minded, um, you know, perspective mm -hmm. um, when we're stuck in a routine uh, instead of stepping out side of ourselves and like looking at what we're doing from an objective way and, and just considering other options and avenues okay yeah okay the next big one practicing do you know what this is mindfulness Mindfulness. anybody hear about that like this is so mindfulness i was talking about mindfulness years ago but i said keeping it real so, but, um, I always say keep, to be aware. Mindfulness is the uh, protocol adopted today in contemporary, I guess, um, uh, therapies and treatment, cognitive behavioral therapies too as well. But um, mindfulness, being fully present and engaged in your current moment without judgment, paying attention to your thoughts. That's important. Reading, understanding your thoughts, listening to your thoughts and your feelings and your environment in a non-reactive and intentional sort of manner. Hey, sorry I'm late. Oh, hey, Kelly, somebody just dropped in. Kelly, you're not late. <laughs> this is a free time to come in. So mindfulness, and I was actually talking to somebody today about this in a different context. And I like to think of it as compartmentalization of emotional state and analytical thinking to separate ourselves, detaching ourselves, not becoming emotionally detached, but just for the time being, being able to detach ourselves emotionally and intellectually from an event that we're experiencing mm -hmm. so we can observe it objectively mm -hmm. and deal with it rather than reaction, like as a reactionary. Yeah. You know, um, oh my God, the horses got out. Uh, you know, that'll maybe that's really freaking you out under normal circumstances. You know, but we're going to do our mindfulness. We're going to be all right, this is a great time to employ this. Normally I'm gonna have an anxiety or panic attack because whatever issue A is happening. I'm gonna look at it as an outside observer as if it doesn't affect me and look at the, you know, the actual um, literal event as mm -hmm. it is in an objective way. And Which makes it much e smoother or easier to roll into problem solving mode um, when you can look at something logically with without emotion <laughs> yeah i mean we're being this whole mindfulness it sounds like a buzzword but it's like i said really it's like, like you want to be aware like you could label it a thousand yeah. different ways right i'm not trying to turn this into psych 101 again but um being aware like she says emotionally present okay not emotional like reactionary but emotionally present understanding your thoughts mm and understanding a situation and observing a situation rationally and logically. And you do that through different methods, you know, closing your eyes, deep breathing, mm -hmm. focus. It takes practice, you can do it at other times to learn how to calm your mind down so you can be aware of a situation. But it also helps you focus on, on your goal, on your mm -hmm. objective. Like mm -hmm. maybe you're getting, uh, what do you call it, demoralized. Mm -hmm. Or super, 
um, like uh, bombarded with a lot of distractions. That happens, man. Because that, yeah, that happens all the time. You want to give up? Okay, I, I, give me a dollar for every time I want to quit, and I have you know several dollars mm -hmm. at least because <laughs> you want to quit. Things get overwhelming. Like I'm a normal person, like you guys, and. You know, you see these video people like us. Oh, they look so happy. Everything's great. No, 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 no. <laughs> I go crazy too, and life gets stressful. Yeah. But you and don't let it overwhelm you. Like Christopher said, you could take a moment and take some deep breaths, or you could even journal or write your thoughts down to recenter yourself with your goal. You could, if you have your goal written somewhere, you could go revisit that and read it through again, or you could just, um, you know, write down. Uh, take them take five minutes and write down again what your goal what you recall that your goal is and what you're doing and identify you know some things that aren't maybe aren't helping you achieve that in the moment if you're being bombarded or something so that you can analyze what's going on um, and then tend to it take care of it uh, rather than let some things can can kind of just like carry you off like and derail you completely and you want to make sure you're being productive um encouraged and motivated so that's why it's good to take a moment once in a while and and be mindful and examine what's going on as you're um working towards your goal yeah i don't like the cheesy cliches but don't let the situation control you mm -hmm. control the situation yeah. and you do that through through this great wonderful piece of architecture called the brain some people um, ver process verbally through talking with somebody or maybe they need quiet time or maybe they need like, you know, to be listened to. Just figure out like what works for you to help you um, calm yourself and <laughs> recenter. All right. Moving on, folks. Mm -hmm. So we talked about prioritizing daily tasks, time blocking. I just love listening to the two of you talk. You guys are literally such a perfect couple and my... <laughs> Life thing gets cut off. Perfect couple. So compatible. Love you both. <laughs> no, 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 no. That was Kelly Compton. Thank you for the compliment. But we're going to fight about what movie to watch on the TV. No, Netflix no, no, no. Again. He's going to fight. I'm just going to sit and wait. <laughs> I like nerd movies. Anyway, moving on. Thank you, Kelly. We, tr we try to get along. Life is short, my friend. Bring peace and good to your fellow human being. And then when you're down in the dirt, you can say, hey, I did my best. <laughs> That's my philosophy. Not very... Uh, I guess I put my uh, short lifespan in a more comical point of view. Anyway, <laughs> shuffling along. So we talked about prioritizing daily tasks, embracing and time blocking. Embr time blocking. Mm -hmm. uh, establishing your routine pretty, seems pretty obvious, but uh, that regularity and expectation uh, is what your brain craves and seeks, okay? Has to do also with dopamine, dopaminergic system in your brain, the expectation. So we like to have a routine. When that's in disarray, we do get uh, anxiety. Uh, practicing mindfulness, which we just discussed. And now I'm going to talk about learning to delegate tasks, giving people tasks to do. Maybe you're really lucky and you have a brood of children running around the house and they can help you, you know, or maybe <laughs> if you're willing, disciplined children. <laughs> yeah, if you're a business, you know, or you're a small business, you're trying to grow. Maybe you have the capital and resources that you can start to learn how to take X amount of money and allocate it to an outside party to perform one of your tasks that you don't necessarily need to do so you can be more productive in another task. Like, mm -hmm. I'm going to pay Joe money to do task A, and he's going to do that. Now, I'm going to do task B, which I can now do 130% more mm -hmm. because I can focus on that. And that task is where I actually start producing more income for my small business. So delegating tasks in um it lightens your workload encourages collaboration which is a very synergistic process okay working by yourself a lot of people thrive in that for sure but um the feedback you get from another human it's synergistic it's it's greater than the sum of its parts this is one of those one plus one equals three situations two people working together can produce more bouncing thoughts back and forth mm -hmm. or whatever they're working on than each person working individually. And that may be very beneficial for some of you guys, but mm -hmm. what are you talking about? Pandemic, everybody's isolated. We don't interact too much, but if you can do that, and that's kind of why I do this here to have another, you know, give a voice to you guys out there and 
YouTube land, internet land, that there's normal humans out there to encourage you and maybe get your brains thinking a little more rather than watching um, whatever nonsense cat videos. Are they still popular? Cat videos. I have no idea. Um, and just the thought, um, if you have, you know, if you have a spouse or um, uh, children or, or somebody that is available to help, but you might, maybe you're a perfectionist type of personality or um, you just like doing things a certain way or you're like pretty tidy, whatever. Um, some people don't like to let go of doing some tasks because they're maybe um, having, there's, well, there's actually a slew of things, but some people, the, the sense of having control of doing certain things makes them feel good or maybe, um, like I said, maybe they're, uh, they like doing things in a really nice, te tidy way or Their a way. specific way. But yeah. really, they're getting bogged down, and if there is somebody available and willing to help, um, then for some, speaking just to people like that, then look at tasks that you're doing and see, like, does it really matter how it's done? Um, is, is, is there multiple ways to accomplish the task? Um, and, and the, the animals or the whatever end, end result is tended to or taken care of. Um, does it have to be a super tidy way to do it or controlled way to do it? If you have your child do it or your husband or your wife do it a different way than you do it, is the task going to be completed and everything's going to work out fine? Then those type of tasks, you know, delegate those to other people. If it's something that's difficult or, you know, maybe you're working with animals and they have to be handled in a certain way or um, whatever, there are tasks that not everybody can do. Um, but sometimes, it, we, like I said, we get into this like blinder um, perspective and then think like the way I'm doing it is the only way to do it. Take a step back, look at the situation and, and think, I'm burdened, I need to unload a little bit and, and somebody's here who's willing to help me. So what can they do that I do that, that doesn't have to be done in such a specific way? Now I'm gonna go on a tangent deep dive on this because this is important. So, ladies and gentlemen, for thousands of years, when human beings were working the land, what was outside helping them? They were about this tall. They carried the children. The children. The <laughs> yes, children the helped. Children. So, what does that mean? Are we turning our kids into slaves? No. But <laughs> our modern culture, the kids, you know, not all children, but a lot of kids, they have a more lethar lethargic mm -hmm. lifestyle. So, children are not just an excellent resource. They're part of the family, mm -hmm. okay? The family is a unit, and everybody in the family has a purpose, and they can contribute. And the trick is, kids want to feel like they're contributing. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, with, the, with um, loving support, right? With encouragement. Well, and they that's what I'm getting at. The idea is now you're trying to say, hey, wait a minute, I got four lazy potatoes. I could be doing a lot around here. Like, And we're not just talking about, you know... I'm not saying, hey, kids, go be slaves. Like, I get mm -hmm. my kids to do plenty of stuff, but the idea is I'm encouraging you to do it because I want you to feel productive. Mm -hmm. You're contributing, and you're responsible. And that yeah. is an empowering feeling. It, it, but I'm not going to go into that, like how to modify the behavior of children. There's plenty of books on that. Yeah, there's a lot of ways. <laughs> <laughs> there's time that needs to be taken. But it's exceptionally rewarding for the kids. Mm -hmm. Um once they become part of something functioning and productive. Mm -hmm. and we talk about this all the time with quail. Kids are raising the quail, they're producing food. They're, they have a responsibility. They're seeing feedback from their efforts. They're, you mm -hmm. know, they're getting that feedback from their efforts. And they're seeing like independent from parents, like, oh, look, I'm producing something. Mm -hmm. So it's not viewed, it's not a cognitive understanding like this is labor. And they're being entrusted to do a task. Yeah, this is an extension of me. So usually we're much more diligent in our endeavors when we see them as ourselves, as an extension of self. You know, you're a little like the work we do here or perhaps what you're doing at home. You care about it because it is part of you, not because you have to do it. And it's the same for anybody, especially mm -hmm. children. Like you teach them the value and, and why you your, why are you doing it and what is motivating you about it and and then you encourage your kids you know you, you teach them about those things too and and, and um, transfer that energy and excitement and motivation yeah so how do you get your kids to transition from I like playing the 
thing with the thumbs of video games or not doing much and that's a challenge. I don't want to go into it now. I can go into that because I'm good at that, but I don't want to go into it now. But there's absolutely ways to encourage kids to become productive and be happy about doing stuff. And I'm just talking about doing yard work, like house stuff needs to be done. Washing dishes, vacuum, bring the laundry down, organizing, which is helpful to mom mm -hmm. and dad because then they can do other things rather than sitting on a floor folding pajamas and for bigger, three straight hours. And bigger picture, the kids mm -hmm. are then being um, taught how to consistently do stuff that they will directly apply to the rest of their life as, These are as yeah. individuals when they leave the home. So working mm -hmm. in psych, you know, we deal with full-grown adults who have difficulty doing these simple things, ADLs, activities of daily living, if you guys are in that field. ADLs, activities of daily living. They have to learn how to be, you know, do these things. Sounds kind of crappy, but if nobody teaches you and you never get that routine. So I'm not saying your kids are going to wind up, right. you know, in that situation, but... Right. These are just activities of daily living. They need to be done, and the, the younger you learn them, the more responsible you are, the better it is. Because then your kids are going to be adults, and mm -hmm. then they can say, hey, you know what? I don't need to worry about this. I know how to do it. I was taught. It's getting done. Now I can be productive doing my other endeavor, mm -hmm. which is whatever they're doing. Anyway, yeah. little tangent, but you have plenty of resources with a family, and everybody should be working as a cohesive, happy unit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Learning to delegate. Number six, regularly review and reflect upon where you are on your goal journey or whatever your resolution is mm -hmm. and where you're trying to attain it. And that's what we are talking about in the beginning, having measurable um, points, measurable goals and mm -hmm. interims. Yeah, and, and like we've kind of touched, we've touched on this topic, but um, with when you're able to review and reflect, then you're taking a step back. You're looking at, okay, what did I accomplish during X amount of time up to this point? And it, did, you, did you get to that goal point? Yes or no? Did you fall short? Okay, well, why? Now you can, you know, evaluate, like, well, what happened? Did you, did you surpass it? Then you can be, you know, you can look at the different things um, that affect your, your, your result where you are. And then also it's a good time to um, review and see if there are things that you can tweak or cut out or adjust in um, your, your behavior or your routine or, or your focus. Um, or if you're able to see if there's something that you're now noticing has been a discouragement. You know, different things. There's lots of things to reflect and review on to, 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 um, to look at your, your goal and make sure that you're moving forward. So you want to be able to stay encouraged and make adjustments to continue that progression. Absolutely. Um, and this is actually something you, you're you going to be reflecting on these other skills. Some of what we mentioned, mm -hmm. like time blocking, does that need to be modified? Mindfulness when looking at your goal, because if you're not achieving it and you're not where you want to be, it's, again, demoralizing and you mm -hmm. get into a downward spiral. Well, we're going to be very mindful when looking at our incremental points of measurement, where we are on our goal. I don't want to get demoralized and be nuts and have a hard time. I want to look at it objectively, soundly of mind, and readjust accordingly to what I need to do. You know, if I have the data, if I know what points I need to change, and if not, I look for the data. Yeah, and, and data, speaking of data, it's, it's it, it, I would say it's important to actually, like, write stuff down. <laughs> However, that looks I got a good memory. But um, then Just you can kidding. you can you have your information to to look at, and it can be discouraging or it can be encouraging. But the point is, then you can make adjustments on the information that you're analyzing. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Number seven, the last couple here, folks. Um, continuous learning. Okay, continuous learning. Successful, happy people continually educate themselves. It doesn't mean you need to go to college or sit in a classroom. Or it doesn't mean you have to like learn a new um, crazy, you know, skill set a year per year. It's just, it could be small learning, small, small things, or it could be big things. Um, yeah, I don't know how you want to. Sorry, any kind of, as you're learning, so, you know, you get to choose, there's really three directions we head in daily we either progress we stagnate 
or we head downward. And each one of those kind of feeds itself in a self-reinforcing feedback loop. If you're going downward, it's very easy to continue down that path. If you're stagnating, it's hard to break that cycle because it's comfortable, it's the path of least resistance. And if you're progressing, if you're growing and you're cognizant of your growth, well, that's self-reinforcing as well because you feel positive, you feel like mm -hmm. you have control and you're seeing results and you're encouraged to continue that. Mm -hmm. uh, continual learning is one of those continual growth paths. I was bad in school, you know, I was actually, but. I was bad in school is a common thing people say. Like, I don't like to learn, or we have a bad um, association, psychological association with learning because it was a negative experience for us. That was school learning. They did a very poor job. I don't worry about it. And I'm not going to be following the same educational protocols that formal schooling is going to suggest. Self-teaching. You know, if you're a big, you know, you're an adult, and you don't have time to sit in class, which if you do is great, but if not, mm -hmm. taking the time to learn. And really, it doesn't even need to be about whatever it is you're doing professionally. Or mm -hmm. It could be something anything. that makes you you as an individual happier. Maybe you wanted to learn an instrument. <clears throat> Maybe you wanted to read certain books. Maybe you wanted to learn a language. Maybe you wanted to learn a skill You know, in your homestead or learn woodworking like it can be anything but something that makes you happy and legit your brain is like most of your other body parts if you exercise it and use it it becomes sharper and more mm -hmm. honed and uh there's this you know the phenomenon of neuroplasticity you're able to create um more efficient which by um, the way <laughs> for those people who are increasing in age you know that's very speaking of your brain that's very good for your brain and um learning new things that you know, that really it exercises your brain and keeps you sharp, just like Christopher said, as people age. When we started doing these videos, we were talking, I don't know, somebody mentioned something and they were talking about, well, I heard to do this this way. And this guy's been doing this. He's been in this business for 30 years or 20 years. Okay, was he continually learning? Because it's quite common for people to learn something wrong once and then repeat it for decades. Just because they're doing it forever doesn't mean they're doing it right. It just means they learn how to do it wrong once and they keep doing it. But when we continue to learn, we're not perfect, you know? Mm -hmm. You're gonna, as you continue to learn, it's like, oh, I was doing that not the most, you know, not the best way, I wasn't, or I was completely wrong, and now I know better, and that's great. You know, you wanna get to a point where you're happy mm -hmm. to admit that you were wrong, mm -hmm. because it's that much easier to change it. Yeah, you grow. That's, okay. I mean, that's a big growing, growing moment. Like, I love to find out I'm wrong, because I just learned something. I'm like, all right, great, man. I'm an idiot, but now I know better. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm going to change that. That was not the best way to do things, and it improves the quality of life. It has to, I mean, a lot of that is, humi you know, being humble, humility, being able to accept mm -hmm. that I'm not right, I'm going to ask other people, I'm wrong about things, I'm not perfect, which is the truth for everybody, and it's perfectly fine. And to go, to continue off on um, the guy who maybe he was doing the same thing over and over, um, if you're learning new, even so if you're working on a skill set, if you're learning new techniques about that skill set continuously um, and you're open to new ways of doing it or you're just kind of just exploring what other people are doing, um, what's working for other people, then it might not be a, a situation where you're like, oh, I was doing it wrong. It might be, oh, these people, I, I gained all these little nuggets from all these other, you know, places. And now what I'm going to make, what I'm doing now was working. But now it's, I'm going to incorporate these other things and it's going to work so much even better. You know, so it can, it's, it's learning. <laughs> learning is also is a practice <laughs> skill. So learning is a skill. The ability to acquire and retain information is not something that somebody's just gifted with. Like, oh, he's so smart, he can read something. No, 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 no. If you begin to train yourself on the retention of information, you become more proficient at it, okay? If you start learning and reading, it may be difficult. You know, people have difficult, different learning disabilities, different things, but we learn in different ways. And whatever your challenge is, you know, you're going to accommodate it to meet your needs, but you're not going to shy away from it. But yeah. as you continue to learn, you become better at it. Okay, 
you will retain information more easily. Things will make more sense. There'll be contexts. You'll be able to conceptualize things a lot easier than we learn. One of the things we do, side note on this learning, behind us is a huge stack of these nerdy board games. And these board games, we play regularly, but they're the books, the instruction booklets are like 30, 40, or 50 pages long. They're these huge books. And to play the games, they take like an hour to four hours, depending on the game. But I like learning the game because I have to read all these instructions, put them into my brain, and make them work before I even touch anything. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like practice, learning practice. It's, it's a fun thing to do as a game, mm -hmm. but it's just an example. I'm learning something that really isn't productive in any way. It's leisure. But it it's is productive because brain. it's, yeah, it's exercising my um, learning ability and capacity mm -hmm. to learn. So then it becomes easier in other ways to learn things, and that's 100% true. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's people aren't dumb. People, uh, humans are smart, We're smart animals. I always say this: We're, we have the potential for unlimited ability. You know, practically unlim unlimited ability. Uh, we just need to find a pathway to achieve if that's what you want to do. Right, and and these days there's so much available as far as learning styles because we are all different. Perhaps we're maybe maybe you're used to learning um, a certain way because it's just the way you were doing it. Like maybe reading, reading things uh, was just your go-to. Um, reading books on how to do something, um, reading instructions how to do something, or maybe watching videos was your go-to on how to learn something or do something. But maybe, you know, shadowing somebody or meeting somebody and doing something in person, you know, maybe that's a hands-on thing, uh, something that you can learn a lot more. And we're coming up into that season. A lot of the small farms are going to be doing hands-on classes to learn mm -hmm. new skills. Look on the Facebook and other groups, and you're going to see like beekeeping, cow milking, whatever it yeah. is. And then there's also auditory, so like listening, you know, maybe people people like to do things and listen at the same time while they're doing something. So there's a lot of different ways to, to, to learn something, and I encourage you to explore, you know, all of the, you know, more than one way to learn because you're going to, you're going to receive it differently. You're going to receive and retain different amounts of information depending on the type of um, learning you did. I don't, I don't know what the percentages are, but I know there, you know, you only take in so much through your, through listening. You only take in so much through watching. I think the most, um, retention that you have with taking in info is through hands on. Um, but as far as studies go, but I don't have any charts, <laughs> but anyway, we are um, not with the charts. <laughs> I encourage you to, to look into, to challenge yourself to do different things. And most importantly, don't ever tell yourself you can't learn anything new. Don't lie to yourself and say you're too old to start doing whatever mm -hmm. it is you want to do. It's a bunch of crap. You've got plenty mm -hmm. of time. Yeah. If you get if tomorrow still exists, you have time. Okay, at least you start. Yeah. So be encouraged to do new things. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I go nuts about this. Yeah, you have right. a purpose. Okay, you have mm -hmm. a reason for being here. Your life has value. Pursue the things that you think are there to give your life greater meaning like mm -hmm. your purpose yeah and if there's something you want to do um and if maybe you're used to like limiting yourself um and thinking oh i can't do that because oh because of this you know well let's look at it from a different perspective and maybe make a list or just brainstorm you know well how can you do this because there, there are so many ways to accomplish something now these days um if you're determined to do something, you're going to do it. Uh, I mean, and just a personal example, um, I, I wanted to, when I was an adult, I, I mean, obviously I'm an adult now, but way past school age, um, I started listening to cello music and I just thought it was so pretty and I really liked it. And, you know, some, some people like at this point, cause I was late twenties, um, some people would be like, oh, you know, school age would have been when to learn to do an instrument because that's, you know, school class. They have instrument, you know, music class and all that stuff. So I can't do that or I have kids or whatever. But um, so for me, I was just like, cellos are, I would love to learn how to play a cello. Cellos are like really expensive and like, you know, lessons and stuff. And I could have easily yeah. gotten bogged down like, I can't do it. I can't, I can't, I can't. Um, but 
I was determined and I found a way and I have been playing cello now for like nine or something years. So I was an adult when I learned and you I pursued cello? it I pursued it as <laughs> an, an individual. I didn't have somebody yeah. saying, oh, you should do that. I wanted to do it. So there's something you really want to do, then, you know, um, latch on to that determination and don't let anybody or anything discourage you as long as it's reasonable. <laughs> You know, like doesn't cause Within harm. reason. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah, we tend to um, encourage kids all the time. Oh, you have so much to do that. You know, we're very encouraging towards kids, little kids, young adults. Oh, you have so much time. You could pursue this, that. Well, here's a question. Why don't you encourage yourselves? You know, why don't people, why don't we encourage ourselves with the same kind of enthusiasm that we do with little kids? What do we see in the little kids that we no longer see in ourselves to suggest that we should have the same passion for the pursuit of growth. You know, we, we readily and hastily encourage it in kids, but we're hesitant to do it for ourselves. You know, we get into our routine. I mean, it's a rhetorical question. It's not a deep philosophical thing. We're, we're well aware of this, that we don't wake up every day, golly gee willikers, I'm gonna do X, Y, Z. No, we don't do that, but we can. Mm -hmm. There's no fundamental law prohibiting that from happening. And I kind of like to look at things like that in my mindfulness, in my perspective through mindfulness, I like to look at things strictly as fundamentally as possible. Is there a fundamental truth that prohibits something or that requires something? And most of the time the answer is no. We create our own existences in, in many ways, in many regards. We create our own realities. We decide what, what's going to happen, what doesn't happen. And uh, we're in control of a lot of it. Not everything, but quite a bit. You know, quite a bit. We, we have a lot of influence. So, and kind of with everything we just talked about, um, we kind of ended again, or got, we're about to end on, you know, what is it that you want to do? Well, then review everything that we just discussed. You want to set your goal, specific goal, and then, you know, set your goal points your, so that you can grow and stay encouraged. Because like Christopher said earlier, it's not easy. It's not easy to do something, to change something, to do something of value, of worth. You know, it takes energy and effort. Um, so when times get discouraging or it just gets super slow, maybe it's super hard to see, you know, like watching paint dry takes a long time. <laughs> but if you walk away, you come back, it's quick. So you gotta trudge through and doing all these things we discussed uh, will help you stay momentum forward going forward. Right on. And lastly, I'm gonna go to the last point that I put on my little notes here. I didn't do 10 on today, but seeking feedback. Getting feedback. Highlighting the importance of seeking feedback. from your, right, your peers, mentors, mentors, if you have them, colleagues, people you work with, people in your industry. Getting feedback. So that's gonna be actually, it's very, very important. It's extremely beneficial. It's gonna be very helpful. And you want honest feedback, not a yes person. Because yeah. your friends are going to be or yes people. Girl. You could be the great. worst whatever in the world, and you ask somebody, what do you think of that? Oh, that's a great idea. That's useless. All right. That's one of those telling you what you want to hear, not what you need to hear. Good stuff. Thanks. Oh, hey, yeah. Bill. Thanks for stopping in, man. Yeah, it's good to, if you can get feedback from, a, like, more than one person, um, I think there's something about, like, someone who loves you, someone who's who's... You know, uh, a, 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 like a friend who's who's real <laughs> and someone who maybe doesn't like you so much, <laughs> but they you interact with them because they're going to be real, <laughs> you know. So. The way people deliver things, that's the other thing to separating yourself emotionally from somebody's personality type, the way they deliver mm -hmm. something. Somebody may be very terse or coarse or whatever, harsh in their delivery. Even if it's quality feedback, mm. you know, and not everybody is aware. They're not aware of the way they speak. They're not aware of the, uh, uh, how their tone affects people. Okay, they're not emotionally intelligent. They just speak, oh man, that's really going to suck. I can't believe you put all effort into it because here's why, why. And they may give you really good reasons why. But because they sound so nasty, <laughs> you don't want to listen to them. So, you know, who you're going to for feedback, if they're harsh like that, you got to be able to endure that harsh feedback if it's going to be productive yeah. for you because you don't want your feedback coming to you 
even quality feedback, especially coming back in a harsh package that's going to be more detrimental than beneficial. Mm -hmm. So know who you're communicating with. Right. And, but you know, you want to get an unbiased feedback source or so maybe, that you get honest information about where you are. And maybe when you're receiving it, if you think there's a possibility <laughs> of maybe you you might be you know a little sensitive to receiving whatever it is. Um, be aware, be mindful and aware of yourself and your emotions in the moment uh, when receiving feedback and then try to try to not be sensitive, but think to yourself, okay, well, I'm going to hear what they're saying and then I'm going to walk away and then I'm going or to analyze them. later. I'm going to think about what they Very said. Nasty. Um, yeah. It might be necessary just to take kind of a break from the information, but then later look at it and, and, think, okay, well, how does this apply to me? Does it apply or doesn't it apply? What can this you is one of the, but this is part of the whole growth process when you're setting goals, when you're trying to change. All of it is difficult. And just in a, a loud mouth, negative feedback in a harsh way, that's just one of those, another hurdle put on top of it. But you know, you're fighters, you don't quit and it's okay. I'm gonna ingest that and let it digest for a little bit and move forward. But I could ramble about this. Feedback is important. It's valuable. And you need to be, or I would, I don't like saying you need to be anything, but I would suggest to be uh, compartmentalized from it emotionally. So you can look at your um, feedback objectively without the emotional investment where it you know, becomes mm -hmm. a detrimental thing. And the other side of the spectrum, if your person of feedback is someone who is, you know, a that a girl, that a boy, you know, they're loving and very supportive and, um, you know, but they're not giving you more, then you could be appreciative of the nice words and then coax that person a little further and be like, oh, well, I appreciate what you're saying. Could you, what do you, what do you think though? What are your, what, what are your, what do you think I could do better? Like, and then usually, some, well, hope, those people will then tend to be like, well, Okay, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You know, some people need a little coaxing. <laughs> yeah. I like to say, here's what is, you know, here's the positives. Here's what's really good. Here's what's good about what you're doing or where you are, whatever it is. This is good. This is good. This is good. Here's where I, in my opinion, may, could use improvement. And here's why. Here, here, and here. What do you think of that? And, you know, you get, it's a reciprocal thing. It's back and forth. And remember, the people you're talking to, nobody's God. They don't know everything. Yeah. You're getting opinions from people. Some of them have experience. Maybe their experience is qualified and valuable. But again, they're not God. You know, they may have been doing something wrong in their own practices. And that happens all the time. Mm -hmm. But that's why you go to different sources. Because you're going to find out, oh, this guy said this about what I'm doing. with this guy who also is engaged in the same kind of business or whatever said the opposite. And you're getting different feedbacks. Then you get to mix them around in your brain and see what works for you. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get too deep into that, but I think that's pretty self-explanatory, is it? Yeah. In sense? Yeah, I mean, we could always go real deep with everything. No so deal. That's, so that's good. anybody, we're gonna hang up here in a minute, but if you wanna put down what your goals are this year, give me a goal. I'll be happy to hear mm -hmm. what you guys are talking about. Uh, we got a bunch of stuff going on right now. We're focused on quail hatching, mm -hmm. expanding our puffy chickens. <laughs> our silkies. And getting our silky chickens, because we also raise silky chickens. People love, yeah. love the silkies as pets. We take good care of them. And, um, you know, we're a small business, so customer care, you know, is extremely important. If you guys have small businesses, customer care, like, the markets, every market is saturated and you have competition everywhere. So you need to, you know, again, I'm saying you need to. What we do and what we think it needs to really be focused on is um, quality of product, right? And treatment of the person giving payment to you, your customer, mm -hmm. you know. Um, yeah, decide what you're going to do or not going to do yeah. um, as far as customer care, customer service goes. Yeah, treat them well, you know, give them a good, we try to give them a very positive experience. We're, we're big on education, what, staying yeah. connected, and encouraging them. 
So, yeah. And aside from that, my goal is I tore my tendon and ripped my knee and they're healed. So I want to get back to running long distance, hopefully. And I weigh a lot. I'm like, what, 230? <laughs> I guess. I'm like 230 pounds. So it's like watching a buffalo <laughs> trying to cross the street. But I like to run. So we start mm -hmm. doing that in the spring and I'm getting old. So I want to stay spry <laughs> if I can. I will. Um, yeah, so if you guys liked this content and what we were sharing, uh, please like and subscribe. And again, yeah, add any questions or comments. Just <laughs> listening with the kids. kids. And I hope the kids are all not being sick anymore, Kelly. We got the sickness. Traveled from Utah all over to the East Coast. <coughs> we got sick. I was sick, too. Her yeah. babies were sick. Yeah. Well, um, is that good? I think that's good. Is that good? I think it's good, folks. So, again, Happy New Year! Oh, yeah, Happy New Year. Happy <laughs> New Year. Um, let's hope this is a nice New Year. I think next week I'm going to talk about the AI. I did that last year, and the AI, and I knew it was going to be exploding, so I did, like, a little light video on that, but, man, uh, who knew? It's going crazy. So I might talk about that and how it's applicable at this time, but the rate is accelerating so fast it's too hard to predict. And we don't have any um, uh, history to make any clear predictions on that. But it's an interesting time. So happy 2024. Enjoy the farming, the gardening, and get ready for that. And I guess we'll see you guys hopefully next week. All right? Yeah. And maybe I'll make a video in the meantime. <laughs> All right, see ya. See ya, everybody. And good day.